All right, the purpose of this video is to show you how to edit this surface that I've created. Um, I have a section in here that I know needs to be edited out. This area doesn't have a lot of point data in it, and I know it doesn't belong there. So I've already created a, a point group called Toe. Um, I'm going to move this point group up to the top so that I can turn those points on and then uh, create a polyline that cuts out this section. I'm also going to create a break line for some of the other sections that have sixes associated with them. So first off, I'm going to right click on point groups, hit properties. I'm going to take the toe and move it to the top. Hit apply and OK. Then I'm going to right click on toe, hit properties. I'm going to change the point style to basic. And then I'm going to make the point label. Um, I'm just going to do uh, point number and description. Hit apply and OK. So then you can see I have a whole bunch of point numbers that are sixes. They run around. Um, this area over here and then they run back down over there. So I can actually take a look at these uh, point numbers here and it, it's, uh, there are areas here where they're, the point numbers are consecutive um, and I know they attach. So I'm going to create up a three-dimensional polyline in a couple of different ways. I'm going to start by going to the home screen or the home tab on the ribbon. I'm going to go to the draw section, open it up. and the bottom left corner here there's a 3D polyline. I'm going to click there. I'm going to start by creating this three-dimensional polyline based on point numbers. So I can see right here that starting at 32,025 and going all the way through 32,029, um, that those points need to be connected all in a line. So I'm going to type in apostrophe PN, and that stands for point number, and it asks me to enter a point number. So this is where I can type in 32,025 and I can type in a dash and say 32029, and it'll allow me to connect, it'll instantly connect all those points in between with a three-dimensional polyline. And then you can see that it automatically created that for me. And the next thing that I can do is based on, uh, I can see that I have um, two additional, uh, the next number is not consecutive, so I have different numbers here. But I can see it's 216, 215, 214, 213, 212, 211, um, 210. And that's pro it's right about where it stops, I think. So I'm going to make this, uh, this next point set be 32, 216, dash 32, 210. And it's going to continue connecting that three-dimensional polyline all the way over to there. Now, at this point, it's becoming too cumbersome for me to determine which point's which, and I, I'm not—it's uh, not real clear what's going on in here. So I'm actually going to um, stop using the point numbers. I'm going to hit Enter. Whoops, Escape. Excuse me. And it's going to allow me to continue from this last last point that I create, uh, last point I entered. Um, now I'm actually going to do it by point object and just continue clicking around. So I'm going to do uh, apostrophe PO, enter, and it allows me to select a point object. So now I can just select point objects going around. And just select them manually. So I'm just going to finish out the set doing that. So that's, that demonstrates using point numbers and also using point objects, and I can use them um, in conjunction with one another. So then I get back over to this area here, and that's where I want to end it. So now I'm going to hit Enter, um, and then uh, it takes me to 3D, the regular 3D poly command, and I'm going to hit Enter, and that'll close the command. So now I have a three-dimensional polyline that travels all the way around. If you click on it, you can see it's one continuous polyline. Um, as with every three-dimensional object, you can always select it like I have here, right-click and look at the object viewer. And this brings up a three-dimensional um, environment here that allows you to pan around and take a look at your three-dimensional um, item without actually having to um, without actually having to do it in the drawing. It gives you an alternate way of doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and close that now. So this particular three-dimensional polyline I'm going to use as a boundary. Um, I'm going to do a different one here in a minute that I'm going to use as a break line. So I'm going to add this, the polyline that I've drawn, as a boundary. I'm going to go over to my surface one definition and go to boundaries. I'm going to right click and hit add. And I'm going to call this uh, toe one. 
And instead of an outer type boundary, I'm gonna call it a hide boundary. What that means is we want to hide all the data inside this betw between there and the existing boundary. So I'm gonna click OK. Then I'm gonna go and click on my three-dimensional polyline. I could select multiple, but I'm only gonna select this one for right now. And I hit enter, and you can see that it's supposed to be stripping out the data. What happened here is I have a problem. Um, I either didn't connect my polyline in the very beginning, or I connected it um, at the incorrect position over here. I'm thinking that I think I'm going to take a couple of minutes here and correct my problem and then I'll get right back with you. Okay, I corrected the problem. Essentially what, what had happened here was that I had uh, I had started at the wrong point number and so I'd left a section open right between these two points. So I just added another segment of 3D polyline there. Okay, so I've, uh, I've edited that one so it's a boundary. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, and do a different one and uh, this time I'm going to use uh, use it as a break line instead. One of the things I'm going to do real quick here is that uh, these uh, point numbers are really large and that's because my annotative scale uh, has, has not been adjusted so I'm going to adjust my annotative scale down here to a 20 and it makes my point numbers a little smaller and a little easier to manage. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect this entire line of sixes right here all the way back to about here um, sorry to here um, I'm gonna connect those as a, a polyline and use that as a break line so again I'm gonna go up to the draw polyline I'm gonna use apostrophe PO for point object then I'm going to click starting here Okay, so I, collect, I connect that entire line of points there. I'm gonna hit enter to get out of the point object and then hit enter to get out of the 3D polyline. So now what I wanna do is I wanna create this as a break line. I wanna add it to my surface as a break line. So over under my surface definition, you can see I have break lines. So I'm gonna right click and hit add. Now I'm gonna call this uh, toe two for my definition of break line and type is standard, that's fine. I'm gonna click okay. Then I'm gonna select my three dimensional polyline that I created and then I'm gonna hit enter. And you can see, uh, um, I'm gonna undo here a couple, a couple of things. I want you to watch this area right here around that 10 point. Um, you can see that I had uh, points, the contours extended out past the polyline. And then when I uh, redo, adding a break line, you can see that it changes it so that the, it makes the triangles line up along that polyline. So a really handy tool, um, very useful for uh, for what we do with it. So it, it helps force the surface the way it's supposed to be. So that's how you add a polyline as a as a break line. I could do the similar type thing over here. Um, create a three D polyline over here. Start with this point and then go here. I like to use the point number feature if I can, because it makes it a lot simpler, a lot less tedious. However, that isn't always an option. So I'm gonna end it there. Hit enter and hit enter again, and that closes my three dimensional polyline. So now I'll add another break line. I'll call this uh, toe three. And I'll select this line here and hit enter. And you can see it conforms the, uh, the surface a little bit in that area. So that works out pretty well. It helps uh, smooth out this, and this that's a, you know, having actually collected this data, I know I can tell you that this is this is what it's supposed to look like. The data is supposed to run. So it's pretty supposed to be pretty smooth and flat in this area. So that concludes uh, creating polylines uh, to enhance your surface, whether it be with a boundary or with a break line.